Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite tiny techniques to add a little bit of fun to your quilts. So do you have like a thing that you do on every single quilt? Because I do. I always add just a tiny little chunk of a contrast color or print to my quilt bindings. And I started doing it, I guess it was about almost two years ago when I made my first like show quilt. And I've done it to every quilt ever since. I just finished quilting this quilt, which we did another video. It's the red scrappy Bargello quilt. And I'll put a link to that video um, down below. But when I was binding it, I decided to add not only like a contrast to the binding, but a fussy cut contrast to the binding. So this is one of the little bananas from the Tula Pink monkey wrench line and I thought it was just too cute to pass up having that just wrapped around the edge of my quilt. So in the description below is a link to the PDF kind of companion for this video and in it there are two templates that you can print and cut out. I'm going to show you step by step how to place and cut out and join this little fun tidbit into your quilt. So I have gone ahead and printed out my templates from the PDF. The uh, free little link to that is in the description right below. And I went ahead and I did all of the calculations for my binding. I measured my quilt, cut my strips, I sewed them all end to end, and I even pressed them in half. The only thing I did differently was that I kept one of my strips separate from the rest of my binding. And that just gives me a place to insert this little peekaboo fussy cut bit kind of between the first um, strip and the second strip. So I'll be putting this here. And then when I go to sew this binding to my quilt, I'll start here and then I'll know that in about 40 inches that little peekaboo thing is going to happen so that I can kind of place it along the side of the quilt where I want it to be. So I'm going to set aside my single strip and the rest of my binding and we're going to make our little little peekaboo bit. There are two templates in the download. There is the um, kind of square looking one and then there's this one that's like a diamond. Now the square one is the one that I'm going to use today and this one is for um, if you want to have straight seams on your binding. The rest of my binding I've uh, joined on the diagonal on the bias but for this little fussy bit I'm just going to do it on the straight grain. If you really want to maintain those uh, join on the bias then you can use this template and it will give you those those bias edges. So when you're thinking about what kind of design you want to insert on your binding, there's really a fairly limited amount of space that's available in a binding. Even though we cut these strips two and a half inches wide, really there's only about a half an inch of fabric that shows on the top of your quilt and about a half an inch that shows on the back of your quilt. So you need to think about a really small design that will be visible in that that fairly small area. So I'm going to use these little bananas here, but you could also use like a small text print would be great or any really small print. My templates that are in the PDF are about three inches long. If your design is longer than that, like if you're using a text or if you've like machine embroidered your name is a label to go into the binding, which is super adorable. Um, then what you can do is I'll just cut this out real fast. You can take these templates and you can just cut them right in the middle and then you could tape them to another piece of paper and then just take a ruler and extend the lines to kind of connect them and that will kind of lengthen this template to whatever size you need it to be. So if you have like a long embroidered word, then you can make the template as, as long as you need it to be. But I've just done it for about a couple of inches because most of the things that I insert into a binding are pretty small. I am gonna use this awesome bananas rainbow fabric and I really wanna highlight this red banana here. So I'm working on a light box so that I'll be able to kind of see through my template to place my banana. If you don't have a light box, then your alternative is you can actually cut this like front window out so that you can kind of see through your template. 
So that's what you can do if you don't have a light box or if your fabric is very dark and you can't really see through it. Um, you just cut this out and then you can kind of see that little outline. And this is where the little peekaboo, little peekaboo bit will um, land on your binding. So I wanna highlight this red banana and it's actually a little bit wider than that half an inch. So I have a couple of options. I could just have like the top of the banana. I could kind of angle this so that it's just part of the banana. Or what you can do is have the banana wrap around your binding. So this part would be visible on the front and then the back of the banana would be on the back of the quilt. This is where the fussy cutting really comes in. You can use this little template to orient your fabric however it needs to be so that your design ends up where you want it to be. Now, there is bias to fabric, but this is such a small piece of your binding. It doesn't really impact the overall kind of bias nature of your binding. I've cut my remainder of my binding on the straight grain, but this little banana piece is gonna end up like almost completely on the 45 degree bias, and I'm not worried about it at all. I'm just gonna, it's, it's a small little three inch piece, so it'll be fine. Work with the print that you love, and uh, don't worry about the bias nature of it. So I am going to do this right here. I kind of like how that banana is gonna wrap around. So I'm gonna take my pen, and I am using this friction pen. I'll turn this off just in case you guys can't see. I am gonna go ahead and use this friction pen because it does show up so well on the fabric, and these lines are gonna be completely encased, like they're gonna be cutting lines. And the gray here is your seam allowance. So you wanna make sure to trace around the outside of that gray box. Okay, here is our cutting line. And you could use scissors. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a rotary cutter. I'm just gonna cut out this little piece of fabric. Okay, so now we have this piece and we know that this is the banana we want to save. So the template we have here makes a little chunk that ends up being about two and a half inches in your binding. And my banana is pretty small. I think I'm gonna trim this piece down. Just like you can lengthen this template, you can absolutely shorten it. You just cut off a little bit of the length of your piece. So I am going to, I wanna make sure that I leave at least a quarter of an inch on either side of the banana because that will be eaten up in my seam allowance when I join it to the other strips. So I think I'm gonna trim this down just to, I want a little bit of white space. I'm gonna go with 3 eighths of an inch on either side of my banana. And I'm gonna take that same amount off the other side. Cause I really want it to be very intentional that I've chosen just this banana to highlight. So I'm just putting that little bit of that banana right up against the 3 eighths inch line and trimming. So now I have my little banana piece cut and it is time to actually insert it into the strips of binding I have prepared. Now I want you to take your single piece of binding and kind of lay it out on the table in front of you. Now I've already pressed mine but I'm going to open it up kind of flat and we're going to take some special care here to make sure that we're inserting our piece the right way. So if you grab your template, I want, so this is the single strip of binding and I want my template, I want my little chunk of fabric to kind of reflect the template here because this is the top of the template. So I want to make sure that my kind of accent piece is on the left here. So I want it to extend from this piece of binding like this front piece that I've cut out so I can see it is on the left side. And now I wanna flip this up and sew these pieces right side together with a quarter inch seam. So now when we press this open, our little banana is right there. And now we can attach kind of the rest of our binding to the bottom of our accent piece. So here is the kind of remainder of the binding. I'm just gonna lay it out, make sure it's all making sense, and then we're going to go right sides together here. Now I haven't cut off the selvage of my binding, 
So I'm just going to do that right now to give me a nice flat edge to sew this too. Another quarter inch seam. And now we have our banana placed into our binding. Now we have kind of these seams to deal with. And this is such a short segment of your binding that I just finger press this. I just kind of finger press this and the heat of your fingers and kind of rubbing that will help that lay nice and flat. And I'll do it on this side too. You could of course get your iron out and do this, but I just find it a little bit easier to do it this way. And then I can just use these, I already pressed the lengths of binding in half, so I can just kind of use those as my guide, press this, and then just finger press that fold in. And now we're ready to attach our little banana binding. Now, when you attach this to your quilt, you are gonna start with this single piece and you're gonna start so that your banana, when you come to it, is right sides together with your quilt top. So as you're sewing, you do not wanna see your little accent piece. If you do, if you're sewing and you come across it and it looks like this, then that is going to end up on the inside of your binding when you eventually stitch it down to the other side. So just keep that in mind as a double check. And that's why we placed this little accent at the very beginning of your binding so that you could kind of put your binding down, tr kind of follow it down and make sure that your little accent is placed right. So my next step is to stitch this all down to my quilt and then I will do my usual kind of pressing my binding, clipping it, and then I'm gonna hand stitch it down to the back of the quilt. If you would like some tips on how I get really nice mitered corners and um, a really nice crisp even binding, then I do have another video that I will link up here and in the description below to my kind of binding tutorial. It's one of my early videos, <laughs> so um, the production quality is not super great, but um, the tips are there. It shows you how I get my nice mitered corners and kind of handle my binding as I am attaching it to my quilt. So when you next see my little banana guy, he will be wrapped around the edge of a quilt. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed it. I did go ahead and make a um, little segment of um, binding with the angled piece so you could see the difference. So I chose like a light gray on white text, but there's this little phrase that I cut out of this print and inserted it into the binding. And this just shows you, I machine bound it and oh my gosh, you guys, it's messy. This is why I don't machine bind. Ooh. Um, <laughs> it was a lot faster, I'll give you that, but it is, it's not even attached in, in all the places. I don't understand, I'm just not, I'm just not good at this. But that being said, um, this just shows you what the, uh, the angled template will give you. So I hope you enjoyed. This is just a simple, fun project that you can add to any quilt and um, it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy. So if you liked this video, there are more video suggestions popping up on the screen right now. Um, one of them will be the playlist to all of my full quilt tutorials and they all have free downloadable patterns. And the other video is a suggestion that YouTube thinks that you will love. Happy quilting.